disavowed, not once, not twice, not three times, but hundreds and hundreds of times, like a perpetual chant. Every time they've dishonored an ecclesiastical deep pole, it is like heaven has been receiving a constant chant. We disavow ourselves. We disavow our system. We disavow any right to claim the system continue. Constant, unyielding, disavowing. Well, I don't issue, and I, I certainly don't wish, I should say, I don't wish to, to anyone the painful process of continuing to prick your thumb or, or parts of your, your body to um, leak out some blood to, to make a seal. It was an important and very, very necessary part of making clear that these people stand for nothing, nothing but power itself, nothing. There is no magic. There is no supernatural authority. There is no historical right. There is nothing but force and fear as their two tools. Force and fear and fraud. The three Fs, force, fear and fraud are their three tools of trade. That's all. Nothing else. Absolutely nothing else. Don't call them evil because they're mentally ill. They would love you and want you to call them evil. They've spent years training disinfo agents and even now constantly, constantly sending out information. Say, please believe that we're evil. Please. Because if you believe they're evil, then you won't see just how incompetent they are. Well, the day has come now, the day of Pentecost, a ceremony that celebrates what is the arrival of what's called the Holy Spirit that illuminates there's that word illumination from which we get illuminati. The, the day of illumination, the day of fire, fire, Molech, Satan. Yes, Pentecost is their most sacred day. It's the day that the spirit they claim to worship arrives. And what we have said now and what we have done on one-heaven.org is we have said that blood as a seal, is not even no longer required, is now forbidden. None of you from this point on should seal any instrument in blood. doesn't mean that anything you've done prior is wrong. Far from it. What you have done is you have sealed their law with your sacrifice. But from this point on, from this point on, from June the 12th onwards, the third age of Mithra, the third Reich of Mithra, is ended. Why? Because of their disavow hundreds and hundreds of times of their foundation by the most powerful officials in the world has sealed their fate. They cannot, they cannot argue that they have a blood right anymore. Not one of their families can argue that they have a blood right anymore. It is over. And we've now sent another package to make that clear. And that package is to Benedict, to the head of the Jesuits, and to the head of the Franciscans. And why? Because all three positions throughout history were known as the White Pope, the Black Pope, and the Grey Pope. The three popes. Well, what's gone in the package and what is the significance of it? So let's go through that. Well, firstly, there are four tribunals, four groups of members that I would like to reach out and thank who have agreed and have been involved in sending these out. And whilst I would love more of you to participate, it wasn't so much a numbers game as having key uh, members in different places so that we can do the following. From the North Tribunal on blue paper, 
from the East Tribunal on pink paper, from the West Tribunal in England on yellow paper. So the North in Canada, the East in America, United States, the West in the United Kingdom, and the South on green from Australia, the following package has been sent. An envelope, red. Why? Because Pentecost is known as the Red Letter Day. It's known as the Red Letter Day. So they are receiving a red letter from the north, from the east, from the west, and from the south. And by the way, as of now, the package to the east has gone, I understand. The package from the south is going. The package from the west is going. And the only one that is unknown at this point is that the package from the north should be going soon. In it is contained two, only two pieces of paper, two in the red letter of history. They are double-sided. One is the live-born record of Benedict XVI as a member of One Heaven. He is a member of One Heaven and he has received his live-born record. Why? As proof that the man lives, the Cessna KV Trust must be collapsed and he has risen from the dead in fulfilment of the most important prophecy in the history of the Roman cult and because the Roman cult apparatus is the guiding legal system and financial system of the world, therefore the most important prophecy in the history of the world is to see the last Pope. He has received his live-born record, is receiving his live-born record. And the other, in either blue, pink, yellow, and green, returning as an indenture, the deed of the trust, in this case the writs of probate, and writs of mandamus, together. So there are two writs on the second piece of paper. A private writ on one side and a public writ on the other. I'm now going to give you the background on the public writ which is a writ of probate. I'm going to read it in a moment and let you know that these packages that are being scanned will be up on One Heaven and will be up, I hope, on the University of Acadia for all to see that they have been served. So let me outline the writ of probate and you'll be able to see these when they're loaded up. The writ of probate begins with the following. And excuse me while I read it, but I think it's important that you can all hear it even though you'll, you'll see it. So this is how it begins. Ritus probatum. Let it be known to all in the past, present and future that we, three lawful and rightful heirs known as, first name, and second, and third, entrusted as trustees in perpetual remembrance by the one true and only absolute divine creator in accordance with Genesis 1, 26 to 30. Have by this recorded sacred event in Eucadia time, in brackets, Roman time, 12th of June, delivered by this our present deed to his holiness, Vicar of Christ, also known as Benedict the 16th. We hereby give Notice for the first time. Remember there are four tribunals and each tribunal gives notice for the first, the second, the third and the fourth time. By this lawful writ and sacred deed of probate, proof and final notice was given in accordance with the most sacred covenant, Pactum de Singularis Calum 
also known as the Covenant of One Heaven. That the trust and office of Romanus Pontifex, also known as the Roman Pontiff, and all derivatives thereof, having fulfilled its purpose and satisfaction, was officially and irrevocably terminated with all such property and rights reverted to the society of one heaven. And as lawful and rightful heirs, having demonstrated our intent and competence, no action of delay, obstruction, rebuttal or rejection shall have any effect on diminishing the validity of this instrument. Therefore, as the trust and office of Romanus Pontifex, also known as the Roman Pontiff, has been officially terminated and all associated property reverted to the society of one heaven, a full accounting, acknowledgement and surrender of all claims is to be provided to one heaven within 42 days by the previous trustees and administrators. And while the offer, office of Vicar of Christ, Bishop of Rome, and Patriarch of One Faith of God are recognised and afforded with greatest respect, as the Divine Creator, all saints, spirits, and scripture be our witness, you are to remit to the facts and conditions herein, or let all heaven, earth, hell, and history be your judge. And then it's signed by the three witnesses. Now, will they respond? So far, everything I've seen about the Illuminati is that they are sicker than I thought, iller than I thought, and so there's every chance that they will not respond. Why won't they respond? Because the Romanus Pontifex Trust, created in 1455 by Papal Bull, is the trust of trusts. It is the master trust. It is the trust in which everything is placed. Everything. So if it is recognised as collapsed, and it has, it has been terminated. Because it's no longer needed, we are not standing as incompetent children anymore. We are not children. We are not lost. We are not dead. We have reclaimed a sacred right, which, by the way, is in the first book of Genesis. If they accept this, then it is over. And if they don't accept it, then all their beliefs and claims to power based on recognition and respect of scripture is null and void. Because if Benedict XVI is disavowed as the last pontiff, then their entire system of faith is an absolute fraud, and that is fraudism. So either they acknowledge that the history is true, and now it's time to move on to something better, or they disavow their entire system, admit that it is one ginormous fraud. 1455 is the year, the papal bull, Romanus Pontifex is the bull. That is why it is a writ of probate. Now the private writ is a writ of mandamus. And I'll try and read through this a bit quicker because we're running out of time. But I, I really want to cover this with you and share this with you because this is a moment of history. And I want to get to the relevance uh, of it for you. So the right of mandamus, the writ of mandamus, I should say, is a private writ. And this is what it says. 
Let it be known to all in the past, present and future that we, three divine immortal spirits, expressed in trust, 